There's been, I'd say, at least two times where I seriously thought I had to quit. I had to sit down with a few doctors and really actually talk about what I wanted to do. I'm trying not to see it as a bad thing, but more as like a motivator. I just wanted at least another chance. It's hard as an athlete to sometimes pick your health over being able to play the sport. It just comes up with a whole bunch of different emotions, like for yourself, but also for the teammates that you're playing with. Max Brown again off the fingertips, and she'll get the point. <laughs> She's just been so good over there for Michigan State on the outside, just sending those off of players, finding holes. She's doing everything. In Canada, sports are just kind of to have fun. You're not really playing them to be competitive. Growing up where I did, in the part that I did, you have to find places to play extra if you want to be that much better than everyone else. I used to go to the rec center and play at the adults league when I was in like the ninth grade just to get extra touches or I'd go play on the boys team to go get some extra reps in as well. Part of the reason that I came to the States was that I wanted to have a more competitive culture and I wanted to play at the highest level. She's the kind of person though too, like she's all in, right? Like she gives it her all. She's not a like, you know, putting my toe in the water. It's like I'm going in, all in. The minute she started volleyball in grade four, oh, we knew. That was her sport. Having it come so natural was just part of the reason that I liked it so much. I was really competitive as a kid and I always wanted to win. It didn't really matter what I had to do, but I always wanted to be first. And if I didn't win, I'd be really upset. I think by the ninth grade is when I really was like, okay, I can do this and I can take this places that I want to. Always my biggest thing was, whatever dream you have, go for it. But you're the driver. I'll come around, I'll feed the beast, I'll get you where you need to be, but you're gonna direct me and I'm gonna come behind you and give you what you need to get there. If you're a Canadian kid and you only play in Canada, you have zero exposure into the US. So she started me, and I was like, she started me videotaping every single game. As I got older, kind of into the 10th grade, that's when I switched to my club team in the States. And that was a big switch because people were digging every shot I had. So I had to figure out new ways to score and I had to learn different things. And I think it made me mature as a player a lot. Obviously you see the talent, but then we started getting the feedback too from the coach. Him noticing something, you know, very special and his exposure, you know, in the US market, you know, she just kept excelling and the feedback was, you know, you gotta, you gotta go for this, you gotta pursue this. I remember spending like 20 hours a week sometimes just trying to make my highlight video perfect so I could get coaches to see me. Playing on the national team helped too because I was 17 and I was playing with girls that were 30. That was the first time that I was like, okay, I can go to a Pac-12 or a Big Ten school. And that was always my dream, was Pac-12 or Big Ten. In the 11th grade, me and my mom and my friend were on our way to church and we were pulling up to a light and the person behind us, I guess, didn't see that it turned red and they ended up rear-ending us. It wasn't a small hit, but it wasn't, you know, wasn't the worst hit we didn't think at the time. I was looking back at my friend right as they hit us and I hit my head on the front dashboard and then it hit back of the seat. I didn't really feel anything at the time. It was kind of just like, oh, like I'm okay. We all came out of the car. I'm like, are you guys okay? Everybody seemed okay. Carried on, went to church, halfway through church. We all kind of looked at each other and, and the two girls both did not feel good. The music was really, really loud and it was kind of bothering me, but I didn't really think too much of it. And then I had club tryouts that night and I started to play. I ran to the bathroom and I threw up and I'd never had anything happen like that before. So I told my coach and he pulled me from the rest of tryouts and I sat down and I just remember my head was pounding and I was super, super dizzy. You know, she's been playing volleyball forever. So of course she's gotten a couple of hits to the head, but this wasn't the same. Within probably a day, Cecily was in her room with the lights out, glasses on, couldn't be loud with her. So I went to the doctor the next day and I had a concussion and I didn't think that it was that bad. I thought it was okay, but um, it ended up that it was pretty bad and I was out of school for around two months. She wasn't doing well at all. It kiboshed her high school grade 11. 
She couldn't play, we were starting season. I had dizziness, lightheadedness. I couldn't read because I'd get so nauseous. Um, I couldn't really remember anything. My grades went from like, I was like a 4.0, high like 90s, and I dropped around a 70. Being a straight A student was really important to her. So not being able to retain information and then not do well was really emotionally battering for her. I got another one actually pretty shortly after that one, which ended up being pretty bad. Two concussions in one year is not great. That one was worse than the first one in the fact of sitting out of volleyball because it was coming up to nationals and nationals was huge at that age. A lot of recruiters are there and you want to be able to play your best and we were going all the way to Florida so I didn't want to have to just sit there. She was worried about the future, what does this look like for me? You see it with a lot of pro athletes where an injury can take them out, right? The doctor says, you know, you, you need to hang up the skates. So then you start to wonder, you know, is this worth it? Can she come out of this? We really had to watch her mental health because it was, it was everything she's ever worked for and it felt like it was slipping through her fingers. This is going to be our baseline testing for concussions. Okay. Okay. Over the last, you know, 10, 15 years, we have a lot more research on concussions, which has not only made our management better, but recognizing them better and dealing with them individually, not only for them as student athletes on the field, but also just day-to-day -day life. When Cecily transferred to Michigan State, as any student athlete, you know, they have their injury history. With her coming in with a history of concussions, it's something that we were aware of. You know, she had kind of worked back into full activity. Medical staff has been really good. Um, from the beginning, I told them what was kind of going on with all my concussion stuff, and they kind of ran me through a few extra tests and made sure that everything was good and I was clear to play. Personally, I feel ready to go and I feel the best that I've been. They've been super supportive of it too, and they made me also realize that like health is converse all the time and it's not always about just playing your sport. Those are tough conversations to have, but I think that's the most important. She's at a point, obviously, where we feel that she's safe to be on the court and competing. I'm looking at her as the whole person, not just her on the volleyball court. My big gauge is how often is she calling me saying I don't feel good and I don't get those calls very often. Michigan State has been outstanding for the health of Cecily. They are on top of it, they're on top of it quick. They have not held back one thing. If they see anything, they deal with it right away. And the testing they've done has been amazing. She said they're watching us, they're taking care of us. For a parent, that's enormous. Thinking about like where I've been and now getting to play in the Big Ten, I am happy with like where I've come and where I started off with and like how much growth I've seen into myself, not even just in volleyball, but also as a person. She's tenacious. You be a little stubborn. The school on the whole, I think she's just happy. She feels like she's a part of something and she feels like she has community around her to walk her through the daily stuff and the hard stuff and the good stuff. So she's, she's loving university. Being aware of challenges that she had early on in her career. I think Cecily is driven coming in and transferring and wanting to be a significant and memorable part of our team and kind of seeing that from the first day that she got to campus. That does make her drive even more present. I think coming here to Michigan State was one of the biggest realizations for me. And I think a lot of it just kind of came from myself. And I used to act like a lot of different things were the end of the world when they would happen, but I realized just a new perspective and there's always something worse going on in someone else's life. I'd say being a Spartan is being tough and being able to persevere. I think here you're gonna be challenged with a lot of different things in your sport, in your life, and in school. I think being able to find your way out of those tough situations and being able to succeed through them is really what people do here. And being overall like a strong person, well-rounded and not just in your sport, but in life. <laughs>